We all know that the Tesla 4680 battery is currently the most advanced battery that Elon has for his Tesla EV, but speaking quite frankly, it can't be denied that it is not yet impressive enough to surpass potential batteries like Toyota and Volkswagen's solid-state batteries. However, that's going to change soon as Tesla's aiming for the 4680 battery Gen 3 with at least two crazy changes that'll make it the leading battery technology in terms of chemistry, of course, if Tesla succeeds. So, let's get into what is this 4680 battery Gen 3 change. You may not know yet, but 4680 batteries has actually gone through two generations, initially in the Model Y, but it was not very efficient, so Tesla took it out to go back to using the 2170 and LFP. Right now, 4680 cells currently being made at Giga Texas are the second generation, which have a 10% higher energy density than what they use in Model Y. They're called Cybercell because they're mainly used for the production of Cybertruck, with a 123 kilowatt hour battery pack size consisting of 1,344 battery cells. Although it does provide quite good performance, it's clearly not enough, and Elon realizes this is not the final destination of this battery technology. So some recent reports announced that Tesla will soon produce the next next generation of the 4680 battery to form a complete version, and we call it Gen 3. If we say the 4680 Gen 3 battery will make the Cybertruck or any future model integrating it cheaper and more powerful, you might not believe it, but that's soon going to become a reality. Let's take a look at the first major change that makes it significantly cheaper. The 4680 Gen 3 battery utilizes Tesla's dry electrode coating process. One. What is 4680 battery dry coating electrode, and why does the 4680 battery need the dry coating electrode? Okay, to recap, Tesla first introduced 4680 cells at Battery Day back in 2020, confidently stating that this type of battery would give five times the energy and increase the range by 16%. But it's not clear if it has yet reached that level of performance because Elon has not yet been able to uniformly apply dry coating to both the anode and cathode of the 4680. Until now, battery electrodes have mainly been coated using a process called the wet coating process. This process involves a mixing a powder mixture of active materials with solvents and other chemicals to form a slurry, resulting in the slurry then being coated onto foil, which is rolled to create the cylindrical cell. The electrodes are then dried in very large ovens that are tens of meters long and increase the plant area, energy consumption, and processing time very slowly, and that makes them pretty expensive in tons of different ways. We also need to note that the 4680s Tesla's currently using in the Cybertruck are a hybrid type. The anode is dry coated, but the cathode is not, resulting in the cathode accounting for over 35% of the total cell cost. Tesla still buys from suppliers like LG, where they're coated using the traditional wet process. Producing the cathode with a dry coating is the most challenging part, but it also is the biggest lever to reduce costs. With dry coating, the mixing process is no longer necessary, nor is the substantial energy consumption of the expensive ovens. Using a dry electrode coating process, this means going directly from powder to film. This technique removes the entire step of adding and removing solvents, and it allows Tesla to achieve 10 times reduction in factory footprint and a 10 time reduction in energy consumption, and that's a massive reduction in investment. Two. How did Tesla achieve dry coating for both the anode and the cathode of the 4680 battery? Of course, Tesla couldn't do this alone, so Elon initially acquired Maxwell Technologies. They're a company that's claimed to have invented the dry coating process for manufacturing supercapacitors. But Tesla wasn't interested in supercapacitors. They primarily wanted the rights to the dry coating process to make the 4680 Gen 3 batteries. However, due to some limitations related to production speed, Tesla sold Maxwell, but Elon retained the intellectual property rights related to the dry electrode coating and kept a few teams familiar with this technology. Among them was a world-leading expert in dry electrode manufacturing technology. And ultimately, Tesla had to internalize this process at its own factory. So, was Tesla successful with the dry electrodes? According to revealed sources, Musk asked the battery team to cut costs by the end of the year and develop one of the most important improvements at the time, possibly referring to the dry coating of the cathode. The info cites three informants. Two of these sources also said Elon might abandon battery cells if the issue isn't fixed by the end of the year. But the good news we've received is that a report from China claims that Tesla did finally resolve the dry cathode coating process, paving the way for a major cost reduction for its 4680 cells. This allows the company to make both anodes and cathodes using dry coating technology. The report also states Tesla plans to mass produce and install 4680 cells 
sales with dry electrodes for consumer vehicles by the end of the year. This info has been cited by people said to be familiar with the matter, and it's also been confirmed by the Chinese publication Late Post. Although this process was perfected in 2022 and proven successful in the lab, scaling it up for production has been a nightmare with dismal yields. According to a report by a late post, the issue is that the dry-coated cathode rollers kept breaking down because the cathode material is much harder than the anode material. Each breakdown led to 45 days of downtime, contributing to increased costs in Tesla's battery division. The solution was to replace the equipment with better machines, but this required additional expenses that Tesla's management did not approve of at that time. However, Tesla eventually figured out how to produce a battery anode using the dry process. This is crucial because, as mentioned, the cathode part of the battery is usually a lot more costly than the anode. Therefore, producing the cathode using the dry process will significantly cut the production costs of Tesla's 4680 batteries. 3. How will the energy density of the 4680 Gen 3 battery increase? When the Maxwell Technologies acquisition happened, Dr. Maximilian Holland wrote that Tesla's 4680 battery cells cost around 100 bucks a kilowatt hour, but dry cell electrode manufacturing technology is expected to cut the cost of the cells by 10 to 20% compared to traditional wet cell manufacturing techniques. So, if Tesla is as successful as reported, the 4680 batteries are now a lot cheaper, at about $80 a kilowatt hour, close to the price of the cheapest LFP battery cells currently on the market. Dr. Holland also said that with a successful dry electrode process, Tesla's going to save time and the environmental benefits will also bring significant other benefits, along with some other performance benefits that Maxwell alluded to and Tesla is certainly keen on, because these benefits include energy density hitting 300 watt hours a kilo compared to 500 watt hours a kilo instead of 232 to 244 watt hours per kilogram like the Cybercell has in the current Cybertruck. So, how does the energy density of the 4680 Gen 3 battery go up? It seems Tesla will indeed begin producing the 4680 cells by the end of the year using a dry electrode process that they've been researching for about three years now. Those familiar with the matter indicate that Tesla will mass produce and install 4680s with dry electrodes in consumer vehicles by the end of the year. However, the upcoming Gen 3 version of the 4680 will not only feature an improved dry coated cathode for better efficiency, but the Gen 3 cells may also incorporate new chemical changes. Now, this might not happen at the same time, but another report indicates Tesla's figured out how to produce next-gen 4680s rich in manganese, which lasts a lot longer and has a much higher energy density. Right now, the cathode of the 4680 Tesla cell battery is NMC811 with 81% nickel, 12.4 cobalt, and 6.6 .6 manganese. This means that in the upcoming Gen 3 update, manganese will be prioritized in higher terms. Tesla might have figured out how to make manganese-rich battery cells last longer with dope cathode active material. Manganese-rich cathode active materials like LIMN204 have long been considered an interesting option for their low-cost, high voltage, and relatively low environmental impact. But they haven't been seriously considered for EVs due to the tendency for rapid degradation. Now Tesla has patented a new doped manganese-rich cathode active material that it claims to have increased the longevity of those battery cells. In the patent application, Tesla says that its doping of the material results in better capacity retention at 50 cycles than regular manganese-rich cathodes. 50 cycles, that's still nowhere enough for electric vehicles, as it would represent about 12,000 miles of driving. That said, 94% capacity retention at 50 cycles, that's still a good sign as degradation often slows down, and therefore, the battery could still have decent retention at much higher cycles. Back in 2022, Elon said in regard to manganese, manganese is an alternative to iron and phosphorus for scaling cathode production to several terawatt hours a year. Manganese also requires less lithium and it operates at a higher voltage. However, as far as we know, manganese batteries lose capacity faster and researchers are trying to make them more durable. You might wonder why Tesla would want to use manganese doped cathodes in their 4680 Gen 3s despite such a huge drawback. The main reason is that energy density is much more important to Elon and achieving a crazier driving range than what the 4680 Gen 2 is currently offering. Switching to a higher concentration of manganese improves the energy density in the battery cells and increases the driving range without additional cost for Tesla. And that's the main reason why Elon values this. If Tesla can mass produce these new 4680s using both dry anodes and cathodes and increase energy density by using manganese doping, it will make 4680 battery cells truly stand out. 
This is an exciting development that could lead to the wider use of manganese-rich active cathodes. We'll have to wait and see how powerful the 4680 Gen 3 battery will be with this improved chemistry. So, what has Tesla done to test the 4680 with both dry anode and cathode electrodes? Naturally, they've installed it in the Cybertruck. 4. 4680 Gen 3 Battery Real-World Testing it's no longer an exaggeration when Tesla in their second quarter 2024 update letter along with their second quarter earnings call, Lars Moravi said Tesla had successfully built the first Cybertruck test vehicle with a 4680 Gen 3 battery using the dry cathode manufacturing process at a mass production facility, which is a major milestone. That means Tesla has been able to mass produce 4680 battery cathodes using the dry process, something Maxwell Technologies had previously attempted to do before Tesla took over. But it doesn't stop there. And surprisingly, we also get to see the first real-world dry cathode validation testing of the Cybertruck. Joe Techmeyer, the resident Giga Texas drone operator, recently took to the skies above the factory and noticed a nice black wrapped Cybertruck with a blue logo. Joe made this observation in passing. However, Tesla's head of the 4680 program, Bonnie Eggleston, responded by writing, Nice shot of the dry cathode Cybertruck. This marks our first look at the dry cathode 4680 Tesla Cybertruck. From the outside, it might look just like another beautifully wrapped Cybertruck, but as we talked about, it's a one-of-a-kind special Cybertruck. When fully ramped up, this Cybertruck will be hundreds of thousands of dollars cheaper to produce than the current Cybertrucks on the roads. This might not seem like a big deal for a $100,000 truck. However, automotive profit, as Elon likes to say, is a game of pennies. There are 100,000 unique parts and processes, and if you can take out a penny cost from every step, you're increasing your profit by thousands of dollars. However, with the dry cathode process, Tesla is able to remove hundreds of dollars from Cybertruck's price by improving upon a single component and process. And that is truly a major advancement because not only is Tesla testing the battery cells in a Cybertruck, but they're also making these cathodes on mass production equipment. That means they've successfully achieved mass production of 4680 cathodes using the dry process, and that significantly cuts manufacturing costs compared to the traditional wet process. Tesla plans to begin mass production of the 4680 batteries with dry process cathodes in Cybertruck by fourth quarter this year, and this will reduce battery production costs, helping Tesla cut their costs lower than its suppliers. More importantly, with a cheaper battery pack, the pickup truck's price will likely go down without compromising performance. And that's great news for those of us looking to own an off-road vehicle this year or next. Current 4680 Battery Production Progress If there's an automaker known for accelerating production speed and processes globally, it's undoubtedly Tesla. Recently, not only in electric vehicles, but also in the production process of the 4680, Tesla achieved several notable milestones second quarter this year. In their second quarter 2024 update letter, Tesla noted that they were able to make 50% more batteries in second quarter compared to first quarter. 4680 battery production increased dramatically second quarter, resulting in 51% higher sales than first quarter, while significantly reducing the cost of goods sold. Tesla's now making over 1,400 4680 cell Cybertrucks a week. But that's not the end of the line, as Tesla will continue to ramp up until costs are at our cost parity target by year end. In summary, Tesla's doing very well in ramping up the production of 4680 batteries and addressing significant technical issues. We think 2025 is going to be a breakthrough year for Tesla's 4680 battery production, and their engineers will be able to focus more on improving performance and energy density of the batteries in the future. This is important and extremely exciting. Once the production of 4680 cells gets stepped up, it's no longer going to be a surprise if dry electro batteries will also be deployed for other new models of the company. Manganese can likely be used with a small amount of nickel and cobalt. There will be less nickel and cobalt in this new Gen 3 4680 battery. Elon Musk is not just focusing on developing a battery with higher energy density for long-range vehicles. His goal is to provide a lower-cost battery that still delivers the same performance. The demand for lithium and nickel is very high, while the demand for manganese, not as much. Incorporating manganese batteries into production will help cut battery manufacturing costs. Research on batteries will continue and may never stop. If Tesla can reduce battery costs by a couple thousand dollars and surpass LFP batteries in cycle life, then manganese battery chemistry is going to be very meaningful. 
There was a recent report from Reuters or another source saying LG will beat Tesla in producing dry electrode cells, meaning that making 4680 cells using the same dry electrode process as Tesla. However, this is unlikely and just typical of misinformation about Tesla, as that's not expected to happen until 2026 or 27 at the earliest. It seems Tesla will actually begin producing 4680 cells using the dry electrode process they've been researching about for the last three years by the end of this year. The dry electrode process for the cathode is considered the most challenging part of the 4680 battery cell and the highest cost component, accounting for over 35% of the total cell cost. Therefore, we need to emphasize again how significant it is that Tesla can cut the cost of 4680 cells by around 30% while also improving energy density throughout the dry cathode. Truly a game changer for Tesla. Of course, there's always going to be minor issues that come up during large-scale production, especially in early stages. But it's clear Tesla's going to ramp up very quickly. Moreover, it seems they have a scalable process for producing the Gen 3 4680s for the next generation of electric vehicles. This is also significant because Tesla has years of experience, not only from their own efforts, but also from the technology they got from Maxwell Tech. Therefore, the Tesla team is confident that they have a scalable process by early 2025, and that also gives us lots of confidence. Tesla's success with 4680 Gen 3 is a major leap forward, demonstrating their battery technology should never be underestimated. They are improving day by day, month by month on every production line. The 4680 battery stands out more than Toyota's solid-state batteries, which have been heavily hyped. While the 4680s have made real-world progress, Toyota's solid-state batteries are increasingly becoming more mythical. This achievement not only affirms Tesla's superiority in battery technology, but also lays a solid foundation for future advancements in the future. So, what do you think about the new success of Tesla's 4680 next-gen battery? Let us know in the comments below. We hope you did learn more about 4680 Battery's big upgrades after watching this episode. If you did, hit that like button and join the Tesla Car World family by subbing to our channel. And don't miss out on any of our awesome videos by hitting the bell icon. We value your feedback and your time. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe and have fun.